So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and a very warm welcome wherever you're tuning in from around the world. I'm really happy to, uh, to be hosting this panel today. Uh, it's a really exciting topic. We've got a fantastic uh, international panel of speakers. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be it's going to be extremely stimulating. So a very warm welcome uh, to you all to ask questions during the session. We'll be able to answer those uh, live as we uh, as we go along, and uh, we'll have a range of questions for for the panelists. So I'd like to uh, to start off by uh, doing a short introduction uh, to our panelists, and uh, just give you a little bit of a flavour of how we're going to structure the coming 45 minutes. So, uh, first of all, uh, we have uh, with me here in the studio uh, Davila Grigiene, who's the CEO of Swedbank uh, here in, uh, in Lithuania. Uh, we also have uh, on the line uh, Otavio Lopez uh, from the IFC, who's uh, Deputy Portfolio Manager at the IFC in Washington, D.C. So, a very warm welcome to you from the, uh, from the other side of the pond. Uh, and then we have uh, in London, uh, from the EBRD, uh, we have uh, Yatek Kubas. So a uh, very warm welcome to you as well. Unfortunately, we have some technical issues between Vilnius and New York. Uh, so Kisa at the moment uh, was hoping to join us and we're still trying to work on to see if we can uh, bring her back into the discussion uh, at some point. Uh, and Kisa is a senior executive at Refinitiv and a podcast host. So it's also a chance for you to check out her podcast after you've, of course, watched this panel today. So without further ado, let me, uh, let me ask for some, some short introductions. And really, I'd like to get a flavor for, you know, why is sustainable finance uh, interesting for you, uh, my, my panelists? So Davila, tell me, please, a little bit about, you know, what is sustainable finance and, uh, you know, why, what inspires you about it? Hello, everyone. First of all, uh, it's a big pleasure to be on this panel and I congratulate all organizers for this uh, FinTech Week of Lithuania. It's an amazing event. Um, to talk personally, uh, I've been actually um, working in finance field for the last 20 years. Since 2000, I'm in banking, in mostly traditional banking all the time. And um, I, I could say that one of my passions is banking. But uh, about a year ago, I developed a new passion. And actually, this is sustainability. I became very interested in the area overall, not just finance, but overall, because I, I kind of uh, always look for ways to, to contribute further to the societal agenda. And I realized that sustainability is the way to go. And of course, to talk about sustainability, uh, sustainable finance, um, recent events and recent and changes in EU, in European Union, we have a green package and a very dedicated um, uh, overall governance towards driving towards uh, further sustainability. And uh, definitely we will talk more and more about it. And I hope I can share my experience for the last year that I accumulated while researching the topic myself. Super, super. So that's, that sounds really nice, you know, having that, uh, that banking background and then really coming into the sustainability area in the last year. And, uh, and having that passion. Thanks, Davila, and very, very warm welcome once again. So um, uh, over to you then, uh, Otavio. Tell us uh, about you. I know you're both a practitioner and an academic. You've got a lot of experience in this area. So uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself and your inspiration. Sure, Alex. Can you hear me well? Loud and clear. Perfect. Um, so first of all, I'd like to, to thank you and everyone who made this event possible. Uh, it's, it's an honor to be here and, and share my experience. For those who don't know me, my name is Otavio and I work at IFC's Treasury, uh, managing IFC's, I'm part of the team who manages IFC's $40 billion in liquidity. Um, and IFC is part of the World Bank Group, which is a, a very relevant player in this arena. Um, I've been, as you said, uh, working and studying uh, sustainable finance. Um, I've been a key person in implementing ESG standards and sustainable um, indicators to our liquidity management. Um, and I've been focusing my doctoral thesis also on sustainable investing. So what, what, what have I learned? And, and I thought, I, I mean, it's, it, this is a short panel, but I thought what could be the messages that I could bring of what have I learned that would be useful? Um, I think to be a better sustainable investor, and this is this is something that I think will um, will connect with everyone uh, in the audience, um, is we, we really need to be focused on the impact. Uh, so I, I started here describing myself and my work, and the, the, the one number I put out is the amount of money that we have assets under management. 
Um, and, and that's very common in the financial industry. Uh, but I could have started also saying that uh, IFC's Treasury in the last six years uh, issued bonds that are expected to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions in 18.4 million metric tons. Um, so I, 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 I hope that one day um, we, we go in that direction. Uh, and why am I saying that? Because we tend, even in the sustainable world, to sometimes forget about the impact. Um, and um, I think um, it doesn't matter. Hello? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Pardon me. I was, I, this is Trying to reconnect uh, Kisa at the same time, and there's a bit of sound on the line. But, uh, but you were just talking about so, the impact, and that's great to, to not to forget that. Yeah, um, so continuing, um, the, the impact is very important. And the impact is also very difficult. Um, uh, the financial sector spe uh, especially is not as close to the real economy as other sectors. So tracing that impact and connecting the dollars being invested in a certain fund or instrument or uh, company with a final impact is not that easy. And what am I talking about when I talk about impact? I'm talking about tons of plastics reduced, uh, amount of water cleaned, a uh, number of jobs created, tons of greenhouse gas emissions uh, 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 taken away from, from the atmosphere, um, or even numbers of trees planted. Asking the right questions is essential. And I think asking about impact and specifically how the impact is calculated is very important and is going to be very important for um, the sustainable industry going forward. The second point uh, that, uh, that, that I think is very important um, to share out of uh, the main lessons I learned in my, my recent work and research is that, in my opinion, sustainability, um, for it to achieve the scale that uh, society and the world requires of it, it has to be uh, connected with financial results. Um, why do I say that? Uh, the United Nations uh, Intergovernmental Panel uh, on Climate Change uh, most recent report concluded that to prevent uh, the worst effects of climate change, we need to get to zero greenhouse gas emissions in every sector uh, within 50 years. That means that a, a very steep upper curve um, will have to flatten and come down in, until 2070 to zero. Um, um, the only way to get to that level of um, uh, impact is if financial markets and capital markets participate in it. Um, so I'll take one or two minutes here just to explain uh, the, the, the three main ways through which um, ESG ratings, green bonds, label bonds, uh, impact investing in general can be connected to financial results. Uh, the first one is through a better performance. Um, there is the saying that all good things go together. So normally a company that has very good ESG ratings, governance, uh, environmental practices is normally the more organized company who will also have better financial results. So that's one. Um, the second one, and to me this is very important and, um, uh, and, and very dear, is it's, it's the government regulation and incentives. Um, why do we? Um, why, why do governments um, force cars, uh, impose cars to have uh, um, airbags or seatbelts? Um, uh, there is there is a a, a, a social uh, uh, um, benefit to certain policies and requirements. So that's the thing, same thing for um, the environment. Um, I think a lot of people uh, like to criticize um, certain policies from um, um, the government protecting the environment, but it's the same rationale. Um, it might increase lightly prices, uh, but there's a, a, a greater good, um, uh, and, and, and it's a way to put into the prices of goods externalities that right now are not being included. So the last one, I mentioned two already, the last one is it's a growing idea in, in the sustainable uh, and impact investing world, which is the idea of climate value at risk. So how will your company or what will the issuer uh, be affected uh, by the increasing um, um, uh, temperature in the world. Um, so with statistical levels, um, we use the value at risk. I don't need to, to explain this in detail, um, but it's basically a econometric uh, measure where you can come to a value of a certain likelihood of how many losses a company may have. And that's also a way to put a dollar sign into um, um, the issues related to the climate. So Otavio, that's uh, yes, that's a really, uh, really no, really impassioned, uh, you know, sort of call to action. 
uh, you know, fantastic that you're laying out some of the ways in which we can actually achieve this. And, uh, you know, I can you know, really sense that passion. So that's, that's great. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for kicking us off. Let me jump over to, uh, to Yatek in, uh, in London and, and, and just do a short introduction there. Uh, and then we can come back and, uh, and just have a quick review of how we're going to spend the next half an hour together. So Yatek, very warm welcome to you. Just tell us, you know, very, very briefly, you know, your story. What is it that inspires you about sustainability? Hi, guys. Uh, hope you can all hear me and best regards from uh, London. I thought I'm going to sit under the palm tree in London to send a message about the climate change in a way. So that's where the background is from. I'm an associate director at the European Bank for Reconstruction and uh, Development, focusing a lot on capital markets and fintech and started the journey a couple of years ago on the green capital markets as well. You know, EBRD is a development institution and I'm personally very passionate about uh, positive change. And what I think really, if I would say it very personally, what I really think helps me to wake up every morning and force myself uh, to go for the morning run is really the thinking about not only more positive or let's say positive year, but also greener change. And that's what I'm really trying to look at across the project that we are doing as CBRD, including the one that we are implementing at the moment in Lithuania, which I hope we'll have a chance to talk about uh, during the panel. And then one thing that really inspired me to look much more on capital markets and the green business in that regard was a very simple life story that happened to me three years ago. You know, I did my workout and I went to buy a smoothie. So I'm getting a smoothie and I ask a question that now no one of us would ask is, can I get a plastic straw? And I got the look at saying, look, plastic straws are bad for the environment. You're not going to get a plastic straw. That was three years ago. But I got that smoothie in a big plastic cup. And that made me think, uh, what is the perspective we are looking at the finance and green finance? Uh, how actually much broader we should addressing that? And that's what I think is important because Otavio told you a lot about the investment side and the business side, which is great. But there's also much more policy side that I hope we'll be able to emphasize and discuss today that uh, should support that and create a incentives for development of green finance and b also uh, eliminate any barriers that there are and obviously uh, as we could see with the eu level eu green deal and the eu taxonomy there is a lot to now look at and uh, and discuss as well so i look forward to our discussion i'll, I'll stop here and waiting for your questions back to the studio guys Super, thanks, Yatek, and uh, uh, that's been wonderful to hear about. You know, a very personal story. You know, going to the going to get your smoothie and uh, having the whole plastic uh, straw experience, and then being able to take that up to the the policy level, uh, where you can make a real sort of positive change and a greener change, as you said. So uh, let's let's dive into this. So the way the way I'd like to structure the next uh, next half an hour together is to to jump back a little bit uh, and just to touch for our audience to make sure that the concept of sustainable finance is uh, is simple and clear. I think we've got a a very wide, uh, very broad audience listening in today. So it would be great to, to get a, a simplified uh, understanding of what sustainable finance is to get us on the same page to start. Uh, and then if we move on from there, we can actually explore some of the key trends. And then I'm really looking to the panelists to provide some, some great examples, some very concrete examples as to uh, how sustainable finance is being lived and, uh, and delivered today. Uh, and then we'll move on then and ask you to gaze into the crystal ball and, uh, and tell us a little bit about the future of sustainable finance and what does that mean. So can we really achieve these targets in the next 15 to 20 years? Uh, can uh, debt and capital markets uh, make, a, make a real difference here? So let's, let's jump into to, to the first question. And I think uh, you know, some of you have touched on this already, especially Otavio, uh, in terms of affecting the bottom line. So you know, how, what, what are business attitudes in, in, for your target audience? And, and, and how do they really relate sustainable finance to a company's bottom line? So maybe, Yatek, let me throw that back to you uh, from, from, the, from the perspective in London. Uh, sure, thank you. Thank you for that. So if we start at the perspective from London, let me then start with the words that Mark Carney, the former governor of the Bank of England, said, which I think resonated with a lot of us. He said, the businesses or companies that are not looking into addressing climate uh, change or climate risk in their business at some stage in the future, if they neglect it, they're going to go bankrupt. And it really is the statement that I personally adhere to. Why is that? 
First of all, investors are looking much more towards the ESG element. ESG is environmental social governance. We're looking at the European Union at the moment with a number of policy initiatives. So you set up something which is called EU taxonomy, which now indicates the line of business that can be classified as green uh, and be financed through a number of instruments, including um, green, um, green bonds and green capital markets. If we think about the green capital markets, Last year, we saw something which I haven't seen in any of the other segments of capital market. Green bonds was the fastest growing market uh, in 2019, with 250 new issuers coming to the market to issue green bonds. We are sitting in Lithuania. You guys issued the uh, sovereign green bonds, and there are also energy company that issue a green bond. So you know that this part of the business is becoming, in a way, uh, the new normal. Obviously, we have to understand what and how we use the proceeds for uh, for the investments that are being financed and how we are actually improving the environment coming to towards eliminating the climate change and being a carbon carbon neutral and that's something that also comes with element of um, of uh, green finance that's not very often is brought to into discussion which is on um, on the reporting side so how the company can report to investors that actually their activities are green or greener, and how those investors can be made aware whether their money are actually going to that side. For us as a bank, so we invest across 38 countries, uh, and last year we invested 10 billion euro. And out of that 46%, so 4.6 billion, we did in uh, green investments. So we have our mm -hmm. internal committee that uh, assesses our investments and, uh, and classifies them as, um, as green. Uh, obviously, we really hope with uh, with the future that this number will will also and the target uh, increase uh, uh, as we see also the client demand. But for this to happen, we also see a lot of need for the policy action to really underline the business to be able to create incentives and barriers. And that's something uh, that we are doing at the moment at Lithuania. And I know our head of office in in the Baltics, Ian Brown, is also listening. Uh, to this panel, where we are working with the Ministry of Finance to support uh, creating the environment that will help, A, the creation of incentives, legal, regulatory, tax-related, for development of green finance, which also includes green capital markets, and elimination of any barriers, and transposing the EU taxonomy to the domestic level. And I think this is really, really important. On the other hand, and this is a bit of a provocative thought uh, one of our clients you know in a conversation said something which which also resonated with me and i haven't had a, yet a thought about addressing he says look please do create incentives for green because we are really interested in uh, fostering that agenda but please don't punish us for investing into brown and then the question now means okay what it really is and gonna be the brown investments and are they really going to be punished going forward or sustainability really be going to become the mainstream because we have to maintain the climate and the environment that we have and do not let it worsen, that the brand will not exist anymore. But that's a much more philosophical question uh, going forward. Well, let's see if we actually have time to get into philosophical, philosophical questions. But Davila, could you share then? Yes, I would like to react as well, because I think uh, having incentives is definitely great. Everybody agrees on that, you know. But there is other things that need to be considered. And I think for me, one of the key things that we are watching is consumer sh shift in awareness. Because even if five years ago, people would not be able to tell you what sustainability is. And now we, we are more and more aware. And this tells us as a bank to act and, and start shifting our product line, let's say. So last year, we already introduced new products, green leasing for CO2 reduced emission cars. This year, we're preparing green mortgages. Uh, we will have an electric car, zero, you know, kind of uh, emission product as well. Uh, on a pension fund business, we also run quite a substantial business in Lithuania. Um, last year, we had a big reform, actually. And while reform was happening, we figured we could use it for the sustainability angle as well. And uh, with change just in the system, we were able to transform and invest 30% of all our funds towards more sustainable ESG funds, actually. 30% already last year. And a very important thing that I checked yesterday as well, that this still keep performing better than the regular funds, so to say. So this is also a very tangible impact to the bottom line. 
fantastic example, and and maybe also just for the uh, for the audience, just to give a sort of uh, a, an explanation of the mechanics of the green leasing product. So what does that really mean? If somebody comes to the bank and says, "I would like a green lease from you." Yes, you know. uh, the cars have to classify by CO2 emission level. If it's below a specific number, it cl classifies for the product. So basically, and then you have an additional incentive <laughs> in terms of interest rates. So this is great Super. and working out. Mm -hmm. So then the client is actually saving money. They're getting a, a sort yes. of a cheaper lease and they're doing a positive thing for the planet. Yes, Fantastic that's example. Sure. Mm -hmm. Super. And Otavio, what about from, from your perspective? You know, you've talked a little bit already about the ESG focus on, on, on investment funds from your side. You know, how do you see the sort of the global change? Is there this consumer shift that, uh, that Davila was talking about? Uh, is, is this, you know, filtering through for companies and their bottom line? Uh, tell us a little bit more from your perspective, please. Sure. Um I completely agree with Dovila. I think what, what Dovila brought up in terms of consumer shift has been the driving force um, um, for a, a, a major shift in uh, funds policies uh, and banks policies, and we could even say in, in, in governmental policies. Um, is that enough, though? So that, 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 that's the question. I think it's a strong force and it's coming. But uh, the consumers are usually not um, as organized um, um, because of the nature. Um, it's just not one single entity. Um, so I think it's, it's an amazing force, but there's a still need for um, um, greater engagement from um, um, issuers, governments, um, and et cetera. Uh, as you notice uh, in my in my open remarks, I, I already made a few comments where I think what it, what will be the future of sustainable finance. So I do think that the sustainable finance will be more and more related to um, um, financial results. Uh, it has to, um, and um, it will be more focused on impact. Uh, so um, at IFC, we've been a key player in issuing green bonds. Uh, social bonds. Uh, more recently, during the, the, the COVID-19 crisis, uh, the World Bank and IFC announced um, $14 billion of aid uh, to fight against coronavirus. Um, and, and IFC uh, issued uh, um, social bonds, uh, including a $1 billion um, dollar social bond um, to, to address that. Um, you, also, you also asked, um, um, Alex, uh, something which is, what is more tangible? So um, I don't know if it's very clear for everyone, but um, where we are now, ESG label bonds, it all it, it started a long time ago. Um, some people trace it back to, to Quakers, to uh, even 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 further to uh, Islamic and, and Jewish rules. Um, but uh, the, 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 what we have today was basically uh, born um, in the 1950s with the social responsible investment, uh, the SRI. That has developed uh, into um, the ESGs, uh, label bonds, and SDGs. And the World Bank has been a key player um, in most of those events. Uh, green bonds, for example, um, uh, Swedish bank, uh, Swedish funds, uh, pension funds, if I'm not mistaken, connected the World Bank Treasury and said, we want to invest in uh, projects that are green, um, and we don't have those projects. And the World Bank said, I have those projects. So that's how... Um, um, uh, green bonds were created. So I think this this is a clear example of what is happening. So uh, uh, someone who has resources, has money, has liquidity, um, buys these bonds, which will then uh, create an impact. And it's very important to have r reporting requirements and, and um, clear connections between uh, the investment and the impact, as I said. Uh, finally, um, I, I'd like to make a, a, a point that there has, been, there has been research showing that uh, whenever there is an independent auditor, uh, an independent, independent part, pair of eyes um, evaluating um, the real impact of green bonds or labor bonds, um, results uh, seem to be uh, uh, much more effective. So um, uh, there is a correlation between having an independent auditor uh, and the actual impact of such a label bonds. Super. Thanks for that. Uh, thanks for that summary. And if I if I sort of sort of wrap up this first part about what is sustainable finance, it's been really interesting to hear sort of three main parts there. I think 
Um, so first of all, on the product side, from talking from the green bond perspective, right through to pension funds, right through to green leasing. Uh, we've talked a little bit already about government policy, the need for incentives or the role of incentives in, in promoting sustainable finance. Uh, and then also, very importantly, I think, consumer shift and, and how are consumers, perhaps less organized, but also uh, shaping the dialogue around the demand for, for sustainable finance. Uh, we also have a, a, a question uh, online, which is uh, around uh, supporting sustainable startups. So, so yes, that's, uh, that's also something that, uh, that I'm, I'm personally doing at a practical level. And we're really encouraging startups to either, th either think about creating uh, a triple, uh, triple top line, so positive people, planet, and profit, so sort of ESG thinking. Uh, or even to pivot towards that direction as well. And you, Davili, you're active. You're active there as well, yes, right? Yes, actually, the... Rocket is one of our uh, sustainability uh, fintech hubs in Lithuania, supported by Swedbank. So proud supporter. <laughs> Super. So I hope, uh, hope we answer Frank's question there and uh, we can, we can uh, of course, talk about that more offline uh, as well. Okay, if we move on to the, the second part then, having talked about what is sustainable finance and getting that sort of broad understanding at those, those three levels, let's look at the key trends or, or these, other, these other drivers. So you've also talked about um, uh, some examples uh, in terms of the products from, from yourselves. Um, unfortunately, uh, as Kisa is not able to join us uh, again due to technical issues, uh, it would have been great to hear from uh, to hear from her about the the whole Black Lives Matter movement in the in the U.S. Uh, I know she also has some very good examples of uh, of sustainable finance and financing marginalized communities uh, in the U.S. Uh, but again, maybe we can we can just hear a little bit from from our panelists uh, in terms of some some really inspiring examples uh, that that you've seen elsewhere. So so Yatek, why don't you kick us off with uh, with that? Great. Um, thanks for this. I would like to first say that also on the green fintech startups, I wanted to say two things. One is we we are uh, working uh, on the one with one of the accelerators at the moment, SWG, for the cohort of fintech startups. So if there are any sustainability fintechs there, please, you know, you can Google us on social and apply. Mm -hmm. And we're also happy to work with uh, Rocket as well. So I think that's uh, that's something at the start that uh, really is important um, to us. We as a bank look at the really wide range of, uh, of green activities. I think one important bit is the green bonds coming from, from our markets uh, in our countries of operation, mostly Central Eastern Europe at the moment, where the framework seems quite um, uh, sympathetic towards it. Uh, what we see there actually, and this is an interesting observation, is that if you look at international investors like EBRD or others, they really are a, interested in green finance and green assets, green bonds, but also they see that there is not yet a supply of green assets coming to the market at the level that we would like to see. So this supply element has to be worked on, so there have to be more issuers uh, coming to the market. But what we see talking to domestic investors, so let's put international versus domestic, domestic investors at the moment, they are not really differentiating green versus non-green because there is no also price differentiation. That comes to the issuer side as well. If the issuer has to do the green bond, and Otavia alluded to it, we have a third party opinion and we put extra cost to this. This is not yet coming back to in terms of uh, better pricing when those bonds being issued. But hopefully this is something that's going to change in a minute. But as a bank, we run now really a lot of Interesting, and because we were at the fintech conference, I'm going to say cool examples of, of green finance. And by cool, for example, we have the program which is called Green Cities, with 32 cities sign up, and hopefully we're going to have 100 cities uh, sign up to this very soon, which is going to make our cities greener. What does that really mean in practice? It means, A, the bank supports the financing of greener infrastructure or other investments in the cities, and on the other hand, also cities sign up to an action plan to implement the greener policy. So it's a win-win uh, solution that we see, which is very, very beneficial. The other element which I really uh, like and was uh, mentioned before, the green mortgages. So housing actually, and housing stock, is one of the biggest uh, energy consumption user um, globally. So how can we make this more efficient? So while giving the green mortgages to banks, the banks can also issue an instrument that has become quite important for us as investors, which is called a covered bond. It's a financial product, it's a debt capital market product that you issue and is secured, bank issue and it's secured by, by pool of mortgages. If those mortgages are green, then we can have a green covered bond which allows us to actually 
finance better and is much of uh, of interest uh, in the mainstream there. So I really, if I look at capital market side, which is something which is uh, close to my heart and uh, and my skills, I see much more green examples uh, of products coming into play. And uh, I think they are also, if you look at the policy principles, like for example, green bonds, they relate to something we didn't mention, SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, which are UN targets for, for globally set up for all of us. And that hopefully will be implemented. And the way to do it is also through a financing by private sector and public sector. But I think, you know, first element is which we are still on the big wave of that is to create awareness of green. And I think you mentioned the shift on the consumer and we see it as well, but awareness is the first element of that. The B is, you know, the action. So we have to action that for the deals and we see that also growing. And then the third element, and I'm not sure it's for us, but it's also for politicians, is accountability. And are we having enough accountability? I will leave that question unanswered. But I think the big shift now is going to come with the post-COVID-19 economic recovery, where we will see that sustainability and the other and two and another element of it, which was mentioned by Otavio or IFC, that something really interesting is the social bond element. Because at the moment we're talking about the green part a lot, but there was not much focus on the social bonds that could go for a number of programs like youth unemployment or, for example women in business programs that we are providing across uh, countries of operation. And I would say that this is the second stage of that sustainability market that we will see going up in the coming years. Super. I think that's uh, some really good insights there, Jacek. And, uh, you know, particularly uh, like hearing about the policy aspect from the, from the accountability and promoting accountability. And also you sharing some, some really good examples of the, the instruments or, or financial tools that you actually have out there on the market to, to make that shift. So, Otavio, let's, uh, you know, uh, hear from you. Is, is Yatek and the EBRD, are they doing the right thing? Are these the right kind of uh, instruments? You talked about the importance of, uh, of capital markets uh, in making this change. What do you, how, how do you evaluate this? Okay, we can't hear Otavio. If we can get some sound I on I cannot him, hear you, Otavio. Okay. I wonder I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was, <laughs> I, I was on mute. Um, uh, let's put Yatek on the, on the spotlight here. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, uh, we're all multilaterals. Uh, we, we work together. Uh, um, and I completely agree. With what, with what Yatsek, um, I think when he touched on price differentiation, that's a key discussion when it comes to capital markets, um, and and that's where I believe uh, um, we need to develop still. So you asked you asked us to speak about um, the going forward. Um, I have any thoughts, and and it's hard to know exactly where where the industry is going to go. Uh, but uh, besides the point that I already raised, I think PSG hopefully and and I, it will uh, become an indication uh, to uh, identify uh, uh, reduced risk. So higher ESG ratings, uh, maybe green bonds, a uh, better performance in in, in that kind of uh, de developmental indicator uh, would hopefully lead to a smaller idiosyncratic risk or beta, which is um, uh, more market aligned risk. Um, today in the morning, I had a discussion with my team uh, about um, uh, some of the ESG ratings. Um, and I think maybe for the more specialized audience who who knows more about the products, um, um, I, I think it's very relevant for ESG ratings specifically to develop in two structured products, um, asset-backed securities, et cetera and um, uh, money market. Um, those are areas where spectral markets, I think, um, let's say those are not the low hanging fruits um, compared to corporate bonds or, or some other instruments. So I think we will see development in, in those uh, specific areas. Um, finally, uh, I'd like to say that um, going forward, I think if, you, if, if we think about it, how, how did this, um, rapid growth of sustainability investment came to be. There was there was basically two, two um, triggers. Um, one is, uh, like Davila said, there was a demand from this. But there's also a, a key element, which is data. 
we never had in the history of humankind the amount of data and processing capacity of data that we have today. And data is essential to the discussion we are having. Um, data needs to be comparable, data, data needs to be updated, and, and, and data needs to be um, uh, used correctly. Um, I think we'll, everyone here has been in, in this environment for, for many. Um, we know that there's space for improvement. And we know that there's uh, going to be um, uh, a rapid growth and improvement in this area. Um, and I'm sure that data will be part of it. Um, I think that um, in, in some of my experience in the years, I've noticed the change already in the last two or three years. Uh, and and I think um, rating ESG rating agencies and even the the, the standard uh, uh, rating agencies now um, credit rating agencies are doing an amazing job into trying to bring issuers to speed on providing comparable, updated uh, quality data. I think that's, um, again, a real shame why that we don't have Kisa with us today. You know, working with Refinitiv, that's that's something that they're doing. They're really plugged into the data uh, and they've been honing this over a number of years. So, uh, yeah, again, um, you know, for those watching, yeah, have a have a look at what uh, what Kisa is doing with her podcast and what Refinitiv are doing in more, more generally as well. Great, uh, great insights there. Thanks, uh, Otavio. Uh, Davila. What are your yes, thoughts? Yes, I was just going to add some things, not to repeat what was said. Many good thoughts are out here. But uh, basically, for me, sustainable finance is a new trend. It's a completely emerging trend that uh, we need to catch on right now if we want to be uh, good businesses in the future and so on and so on. It's very important for everyone to understand that the framework of regulations is coming. We will all be able to identify the company impacts. And exactly this is how we will measure and understand what is uh, green washed or what is green, you know. Uh, what where I see that we need to focus uh, not only on consumer uh, uh, overall uh, attitudes and shifts, but also it's very important to work with business community for me because we as a bank, of course, we are dependent on business impacts. So uh, definitely all businesses need to understand and and. I think I also have a message for the fintech community as well, because the uh, fintech community as such has an ability to be a forward front runner in this whole trend and change that will develop because eventually in five years or a few more, uh, everything will be regulated so so the banks will not even you know be able to borrow money to the businesses that will not be on sustainability journey as such. So I think fintechs definitely can be uh, uh, using this trend and, and making the most out of it and helping the businesses, the traditional businesses, transform towards this better joiner, towards the sustainability. So this is important to take into account. Super. And, and again, thanks for the, the, the question uh, that we have uh, online about the difference between uh, being green and, and greenwashing. Uh, you know, Yatek, you've, you've already talked about uh, the cooperation with Startup Wise Guys and really looking for sustainable fintechs. So, you know, can you give the audience sort of a short uh, summary? How do you ensure that, that those are really, uh, you know, sustainable finance fintechs uh, and not just sort of greenwashing fintechs? Sure. So, first of all, for SWG participation, you know, we welcome all fintechs, obviously. It's not only limited to sustainability, so let me let me be clear on that. Uh, so welcome all fintechs from, from BRD countries of operation to apply. Uh, you can look at the announcements on SWG or our website. We also partner with Rocket, um, and uh, that partnership went, went live last week, so I'm very happy that, you know, we find a way to do it. And then you're asking a really, really valid question because I'm glad that this term was 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 mentioned the greenwashing, right? In a way, so can you a little bit, you know, dust it off or window dress and sell it as a green? So when we talk about the more mature markets, when we talk about the green bonds, we have a green bond principles. So we're now going to have standards from the EU. We have the EU taxonomy. So we will, I think, especially in the European Union be quite safe to say what is green and what is not green on the big business side. And I think having all the companies that can be a third party or a third opinion or a third party opinion provider, that's going to bring us to this, which is good. But then comes to the fintech scene when I think, you know, it will be much more discretionary to, to identify what can support uh, or not sustainability. Uh, and I think it's very hard to define for the 
startup that is about to be developed, whether their solution truly is green or not. And I think that's not only for people like me to look at it, but also engineers and others that are green and ESG, uh, ESG uh, specialists. And that's a really, uh, really interesting element. On the other hand, because sustainability, and we all agree on this, is, I would say, not only a new trend, but it's really going to be the mainstream uh, sooner than we actually expect. I would say that a lot of fintechs will go that way. And then if I were to be a fintech, to be honest, uh, which I'm not because I work in a development organization, I would connect to something that Otavio said, the data, because we want to have the data and the understanding, et cetera. Can we find the better ways to, to develop something new that will help us with the data? And then can we get that and link that to actually making the investment greener or more visible that is green? Again, that's just an idea that came a second ago to to my head, but I think it's going to be really hard, at least at this stage, to do it. I think FCA, for example, tried to do it. So Financial Conduct Authority in the UK, they run the world most famous regulatory sandbox, even a little bit more famous than the Lithuanian one. So I'm so sorry to the Bank of Lithuania for saying that, but your, your sandbox is also amazing. But the FCA sandbox did something really cool. They organized this cohort of green startups. So they got 10 of green companies, purely green, to go for the regulatory issues and actually um, uh, go for the sandbox regime. But the difficulty with this was, I think, for us or for the FCA to define the conditions of what is green for such an early stage uh, business. Super. Thanks. Thanks for touching on that. And uh, Otavio, I guess, you know, uh, the 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 whole concept of sustainable finance is considerably more advanced over there in, in, in Washington, D.C. and with, with your organization and the World Bank. Um, you know, is greenwashing still something that's talked about? As, uh, as Jacek says, you know, do we need to, to brush that off or where is it today? Um, uh, thanks for the question, um, Alex. Um, as you know, as, although we're based in Washington, D.C., the World Bank is dealing uh, with uh, um, projects uh, all over the globe. Um, Putting just for a second the bank aside, uh, my own research on my doctoral thesis is is deeply related to um, uh, what we could call greenwashing. Um, so I'm, I'm, my thesis is focused on trying to identify um, a connection between funds that claim to be um, um, developmental funds and see if they are uh, different from other uh, non-developmental uh, funds, significantly, let's say statistically uh, different. And on an, another angle, I'm trying to connect uh, green bonds um, with a final impact on the climate. All of that is hard, and that's why I say it's. I, I'm, I'm, I think it's essential, but it's not easy. And um, I think that's very valuable. Uh, and why is that very valuable? Because we don't want to see a world uh, where, um, as as I, I like to to imagine, imagine a world where every single bond is green. Would the climate still change? Um, so the, the question behind um, this, uh, the many questions that could pop up uh, behind this, this one main question is, are green bonds actually doing what they are supposed to when it comes to um, uh, uh, global warming and, and climate change? Um, and that's, a, that's an essential question to ask, because if they are not, um, we probably uh, need to adjust things and, and avoid what we call greenwashing. Because um, if a green bond is not addressing the main um, uh, environmental issue, um, it, it should be at least disclosed exactly what it's doing. To that point, but I'd just like to, to add – yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, just uh, I'm sorry that we're, we're running out of time, and I think that was almost sort of a very nice uh, sort of uh, summary and conclusion into into greenwashing. Um, sure. I, I think it it would be great just to just to sort of uh, wrap up with a with a couple of summary points, and then to go back to each of you for sort of a quick, uh, you know, short one or two words the, the the future of sustainable finance to bring this all together. So so again, you know, we've talked uh, considerably around uh, green products. Uh, different. It's been really good to hear all of your examples on that. Uh, so, so thanks to all of you. Uh, we've talked about government policy incentives. Uh, we've talked about the role of data and how we're moving to a much more data-driven uh, uh, life where we can actually really measure the impact of, uh, of, of sustainable impact of uh, sustainable finance. We've talked about consumer shift. We've also talked about pricing uh, and how we need to have more issuers, uh, more strength on the supply side. Uh, and, it, and all of this, of course, is, uh, is in terms of having a real uh, positive climate impact. Mm -hmm. So uh, last couple of words, um, you know, the future of sustainable finance. Um, 
In my opinion, just two words, partnership and green recovery. So what do I mean by partnership is we put all forces together, governmental institutions and um, the partnership between business and, and non-profits will start to happen and between governments and international community, we will have better results and green recovery is an excellent wish and we have a chance to have it in a greener way. So this is my wishes. Fantastic. Very upbeat uh, way, to, way to end. Thanks, Davila. Uh, Jatek, from you, final uh, quick, uh, quick comments? Absolutely. I think, you know, let's think about AAA. AAA is the highest rating in capital markets, and I think let's translate it now to awareness, action, and accountability. And let's make it personal. We've all changed. Been, our life has been changed in the last two, three months so much. We started walking more. We started using bicycles more. And every change starts within us first. So let's change and continue having that change with us as persons, humans, and that will in the future also transpose to the thinking of us as professionals supporting the development of green, green finance. So that will be my message. Let's do the AAA. Sean Sharp, AAA, fantastic, thank you. And Otavio, last, uh, last word from you. <laughs> I'm not as good with acronyms, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go with uh, three main words. I think, as I said, impact is essential. I think um, financial results connected to um, uh, sustainable finance is essential. And the final point that I, uh, I'd like to make is uh, standardization of, of data. I think um, standardization in this industry is going to be key going forward. Fantastic. I think, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you heard this first here. The future is bright. The future is sustainable finance. We're, we're, we're on the right trend. Uh, it's been wonderful to have you all today. Uh, thanks to Jacek uh, in London. Thanks to Otavio in Washington, D.C. Davila here in, uh, in Vilnius, Lithuania. And uh, back over to you, Arumas. Many thanks to, uh, for watching. Thank you.